In the dark annals of human history, few stories are as shocking and poignant as that of Ora Benga, a young Mbutai man torn from his homeland and paraded as a living specimen. His story is not merely a personal tragedy, but a chilling reflection of an era characterized by imperialistic conquest, rampant racism, and a devastating disregard for the inherent value of human life. Before we delve into this harrowing tale, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Your support helps us bring more stories like this to light, and we appreciate your engagement with our content. Thank you. And now let's explore the story of Ota Benga. Ota Benga's life began in the verdant heart of the Aturi forest in the Congo Free State. Born around 1883, he was part of the Mbuti Pygmy community, a people deeply connected to the natural world. In a horrific turn of events, his family was slaughtered by the force publique, the military force governed by King Leopold III of Belgium, during a raid. His wife and children were mercilessly killed, his village burnt to ashes. With a heart heavy with grief, Oda Benga found himself enslaved by the very people who had destroyed his life. Shackled in chains, treated as less than human, he was a captive in a world that seemed to have lost all sense of morality and compassion. In 1904, Samuel Werner, an explorer and missionary, arrived in Africa. His mission was a paradoxical blend of scientific curiosity, a sense of racial superiority, and a genuine concern for the welfare of native Africans. Werner's task was to bring pygmies to the St. Louis World's Fair, where they would be displayed as living exhibitions. Upon encountering Otabenga, Werner was struck by his intelligence and spirit. He negotiated for Otabenga's release, a transaction that involved trading goods and the vilest quality of rum. Though Werner may have seen this as a rescue, it was, in essence, a transfer from one form of captivity to another. The St. Louis World's Fair in 1904 was a grand celebration of progress, innovation, and human achievement. Amidst the marvels of technology and culture, Ota Benga and other pygmies were put on display in a human zoo, an appalling spectacle that drew large crowds. Their every move was observed, dissected and commented upon. Scientists took measurements of their heads, eyes, noses, and jaw sets, treating them as exotic specimens rather than human beings. They were forced to perform their daily routines for the entertainment of the audience, their dignity stripped away under the guise of scientific exploration. The unabashed racism of the day was on full display. Oda Benga's smile, his dance, his very existence were twisted into caricatures, dehumanizing him and his fellow pygmies. The dark saga continued when Ota Benga was transported to the Bronx Zoo in 1906. Here, he was exhibited with an orangutan in the monkey house. A sign outside his enclosure provided his height, weight, and alleged age, as though he were a zoo animal rather than a human being. The public was fascinated and appalled in equal measure. The exhibit drew large crowds, and the media chronicled Otabenga's life at the zoo in bombastic terms. The New York Times and other leading newspapers contributed to an orgy of racism, as described by reporter Mitch Keller. Public outcry eventually led to his release from the zoo, but the psychological damage was profound. The exposure, the humiliation, the cruel taunts of the crowd had forever altered Otabenga's perception of himself and his place in the world. Freed from the zoo's cage, Ota Benga found shelter among African-American communities. There, he endeavored to rebuild his life, but the scars of his past were indelible. He went to school, learned English, and even adopted American customs. Yet his heart ached for the forests of his homeland, and his mind was tormented by memories. Ota Benga's longing for home became an unquenchable thirst a constant agony. The impossibility of his return, coupled with the trauma of his experiences, drove him into despair. In 1916, the pain became too much to bear, and he ended his own life. His final act was a haunting cry for the home and dignity that were forever lost in him. These chapters of Odebenga's life 
are an indelible stain on human history, revealing a depth of cruelty and prejudice that must never be forgotten. His story is a haunting reminder of our capacity for inhumanity and the importance of recognizing and valuing the inherent dignity of all individuals. With dates and detailed accounts, we reconstruct the painful journey of Otabenga, from the loss of his family to his exploitation by those who considered themselves civilized. His life is a dramatic testament to the resilience of the human spirit and a warning against the dangers of dehumanization and disregard for the sanctity of human life. Otabenga's life is a tragic odyssey that transcends time and geography. It is a cautionary tale that resonates in the collective conscience, urging us to remember, to understand, and to grow. In his heartbreaking story, we find a call to action, a plea to see the humanity in all people, and to recognize that the pursuit of knowledge, wealth, and power should never eclipse our compassion and respect for one another. May the memory of Ota Benga inspire us to build a world where such tragedies are consigned to the past, never to be repeated. If this story moved you, please take a moment to like, comment, and share it with others who may find it impactful. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more content that explores the depths of human history and the lessons we must learn from it. Your engagement and support help us continue our mission to educate and inspire. Thank you for joining us on this journey.